Welcome to Children's Literature and Reading Support. I'm your tutor, Mrs. Richter, and please, if you need to phone me, do so between five and eight weekdays only. My number is 0811281431. So, this subject will inspire you to know more about the concepts discussed in this presentation. In short, we will look at terminology and verbs. Um, the abbreviation for our subject is CLRS. Remember, this subject is very, very loaded and an essential and important subject to know more about a child. Students need to know the content and the terms of the subject to really understand. If you are unsure about the question, please ask in advance. And as I've said, please, not a day before the exam. I have numerous phone calls on a, a Sunday even that's unacceptable. Please study beforehand. You cannot study this subject a day before the exam. Remember, our questions is really, um, they are actually linked to each other, so you must really know what you are talking about. Now, let's look at the first one. Explain the purpose of playing reading games in the pre-primary classroom. I mentioned pre-primary classroom, but remember it can also be junior primary classroom. You must be able to describe an idea with a game for an exciting literacy lesson. Mention how this game will promote the literacy. Now remember, kids don't like to read. We must teach them and it must be with fun. There are many different types of activities that you can plan for a classroom. I'm not going to say pre-primary as it is also for junior primary. Um, to prepare your child or children for learning the mechanics of reading and phonics. The reading activities will give them the foundation that is really necessary to become an independent reader. Now, the activities and the tips will optimize, I've highlighted that word that you can remember this, it will optimize your lesson to support the emergent reading and writing skills in your um, learners, especially the young ones. One of the basic reasons for planning is a daily circle. Now remember, it is essential for a junior primary or a pre-primary class to have a carpet in the class. Now, you do that sitting on the circle and with this you have this intimacy with one another so that you can give the direct instructions and teach them the proper things. Now, introducing children also to the printed word means that they will sit on this carpet and you will provide it with a reading time. Now, for instance, kids love to listen to stories. Now, the teacher will read it out loud. And with a richly illustrated um, picture book, this will enhance it more. Now, a well-written story will instill in them a lifelong love for reading. I mean, let's take an example of the three little bears. If the pictures are really colorful, then they will enjoy it more because they will see, wow, this is the older brother, the younger brother, and the different houses also. Now, remember, after uh, the children are now seated on the carpet, you can do the story with the nice pictures, but let them do a song also. Introduce a morning song. It can be the one like, um, uh, start every morning with a song like, morning, uh, good morning, good morning, and how are you? So they can sing it. I've also incorporated an example in this presentation for you. Now, there's also a nice uh, way for getting the children involved after the singing to have a side word game like bananas. Now I'm going to put this up. For instance, I just made one, but similar to this, where you have your monkey. Now the monkey has on its tummy, as you can see, a word. Now you did not really teach the children this word, but it's a side word. Now the minute they see the banana, and they match it maybe on the feet, then they see, um, well, four and four matches, so then later on it becomes um, familiar to them and they can read those words. Now, I said either buy or make your own monkeys. The children, this is also one that the children colored, it's very colorful, and they enjoyed this activity. Even an art activity, you can use your things. Now, you can add bananas because you know, monkeys and bananas go together and they enjoy that a lot. Now, you can have an artful artist. Children love to be, be creative when it comes to drawing and make illustrations also. Now, 
as I've said, they can make their own monkeys or bananas or even a tree with apples, it doesn't matter. You must be uh, guided with your um, kids that you can use their things. And remember, if you use their art material for your lessons, that will make um, them more proud of the, and they will be more engaged also. Now the next thing is get ready for reading. Now let's have the letter H. That doesn't mean anything to a child because it's still new and it's abstract and they need to know what is this about. Now you can tell. Here comes the letter H. You have it that if it's walking. And then um, the worksheet can prepare them where you can have dotted lines where they can fill in or you can have the pictures where they match the her Harry Hatman for hands, something like that. Ne? That they can really have a picture and match it to the letter. So you remember the hand we had? Yes, teacher, then they will know to put in the Harry Hatman, her. Now, we can also start with words like hello, house and hand and complete a colorful worksheet that they can see that this letter and this picture are actually uh, together. It matches. Now, I hope that gave you an idea for a practical um, worksheet or a practical thing, the song, remember the story, the song, um, artful things, or you can just have a little picture like the monkey. Now let's look at the next concepts. Um, phonological awareness and phoneme awareness. Students tend to get confused with these two, so I'm going to explain this so that you know the proper difference between these two. Phonological awareness is when a child becomes aware of the fact that the spoken word is made out of sounds. In other words, um, you can actually hear the sounds in the word. Phonological awareness can take the form of awareness of a rhyme and syllables and an awareness of the onset of words. For instance, um, that they say a word hand, sand, you know, a rhyme sort of. Now, phoneme awareness is essential to the process of learning to read. Phoneme awareness is also necessary for the child to really understand. If you understand, then you know phoneme awareness is taking place. For instance, that the letters in written words represent the phonemes in spoken words, alphabetical principle, for example. Now, understand that the letter N stands for the sound N by itself. It is not phoneme awareness. Children need to understand that, for example, the word handle has an N, as I say it now, a sound N in it, and that the N sound in the middle of handle is the same as the N sound overall. Like N for hand, noun, all those, you can let them repeat some of the words. At the end of alone and at the beginning of nine, alone you see the n and nine again now they are the same children know that the word wait is made up of three phonemes w a t wait and that the word pull and map both contains the phoneme p, softly the p we don't say p ne? children know that phonemes are the building blocks of spoken words these building blocks can then be rearranged or substituted to make different words also. Teaching phoneme awareness facilitates later to reading acquisition. Reading failure can then be linked to a lack of phoneme awareness. Phoneme awareness goes beyond phonological awareness by placing, now I highlighted this again, remember, by emphasizing on the individual phonemes within the word. And please, when a child, when we say, for instance, wait, we say, do not go and say W-A-I-T, especially not with the younger ones. Né? It's w a t Phoneme awareness skills include the ability to isolate a phoneme. The first, like I showed now, the, the w, the middle, or the last from the rest of the word. The ability to segment, 
words into individual phonemes or the ability to delete a specified phoneme from a word. For instance, if we want to emphasize the W, we can leave it out. We can say eight, w, eight, b, eight. You can use the same and you can make a difference there. Now, let's look at criteria how to evaluate um, literature in the pre-primary or the primary phases. Books that reflect the everyday world familiar to a child. In other words, you know the normal things like a book playing with friends, visiting family, going for a holiday, uh, on a holiday or a picnic, something interesting. Books that encourage children to play with words and phrases. Children love to do those things, you know, to repeat things after one another. For instance, there are funny sounds in the book and they like to repeat that also. You may even ask yourself questions about the book. Is this book well written? Can you and the learners enjoy it, you as the teacher now? Um, do the illustrations complement the text? I'm going back to the three little pigs again. If I just tell the story, it wouldn't make that big impact, especially if I come to the wolf. I will say the wolf and they will just, you know, as if they don't comprehend. But the minute you make the sound and you show the picture of the wolf, they will be um, really um, into the story and playing the, the part of that also. Now, theme-related reading can enhance experiences and events. For instance, if we have a birthday in class and you have a storybook about the birthday, that can just enhance it more and remember they pick up the vocabulary also. And they will go back home and say, but this is how we can do uh, our birthday party or arrange something like that. Large format books, the font must be properly and um, if it's big, the kids will sit close and they will pick up the words also while you as the teacher read. Simple books with repetitive text can encourage children to join in. Um, for instance, like the um, little red um, hen, when she says, now I will do it, and that, that's the whole time a repetitive text. Does the book stretch the child's attention span and build vocabulary? Does the story avoid gender, race, or other stereotypes? Remember, it's important that a child feels safe and that they want to belong and they want to be part of a, 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 this new story. Now, if they can put themselves as a character in the story and they feel safe, and then they will really gain more than we really think. Now, you can also have a checklist in your mind to check. The minute you have a book and you scrutinize it, you can see, is there conflict? Is it really um, for the children to explore? And how is it um, this conflict resolved? Um, how can they explore? Is it little books that they can flip up and read underneath? The, for instance, if there's a story about the bear uh, that's going on a fishing trip, can he lift up the little flaps in the book and see what is underneath the rock? Maybe a crab or something like that. And then the characters. Do we have a variety of culture groups or is it just stereotype? Um, is there males and females in the leadership roles? Remember, we have a class um, with kids, males and females, so we need to th see it must not only be females or not only males, it must be both. Then um, the theme. Does it relate to your theme, the values or the lessons to be learned? Is there a moral in it that they can gain? Now the setting of the story is very important. The is it a variety in general? Or is it the urban or suburban? And is it really realistically? I mean, you won't get Bushmen in America. That doesn't fit. If culture settings, we must look at the illustrations. In other words, um, is it the black pot that we are using? Diverse populations, is the Eriru, Tamara, um, Ovaimba, is everyone incorporated there? Now, remember, we must also um, see the type of kids that we have in class and correlate our reading to them. If they are a mixture of all the cultures, you have a mixture in your books also. Avoid reinforcing so, uh, societal stereotypes. Other considerations like age. Remember, you cannot read for a five, six, seven-year-old child a book that is supposed to be for um, 20-year-old people, a Roman or something like that. Nee? Romance is not for them. 
and then remember also the value of the book is there really a moral in the story that they can gain then let us look also if it's realistically if especially with culture settings remember we are very proud of our culture so we need to see that everything correlates in that book then um, the illustrations um, is it do we consider it as the diverse population uh, for an example and then remember we need again I emphasize this the age appropriate and values must also be proper and um, for instance a moral a moral in a story instead of saying to the child don't do that rather give him a story with a moral in it that's also very effective now we will look at certain ways to develop now the retention of what was read remember we want our kids to remember what we have read or explain or say to them. Now, children can be an active participant in reading the story. I'm referring back now to the previous uh, question. Remember I said use large um, formats, in other words, large, large print script. Now, if you read and the child can follow that, he will be active and say, wow, I can see this word, I can read this with teacher then this is what is meant with an active participant. Some children are not able to do that yet, but they can maybe stand on their knees next to you and turn the pages while you read to the group. They really like to be involved like that. After the story, draw pictures and make objects of the characters, maybe in your art project. I'm referring back to our monkey again. Remember they can make the monkey in the art period. Use their arts. In your lessons corporate uh, incorporate that in all your things then afterwards you can dramatize the story or create the play based on the story they can um, for instance we can use the monkeys I'm putting this back again without the word now and now you have a little where they can talk or they can even have the monkeys in front of their faces and they can make a role play with that remember kids love to do that they can even just use Basic, basic, basic things to do role play. Keep the books in your class, please, in a reading corner. Children love to, when they are quickly finishing with, off with their work or when you are, when they are not occupied, they love to go to the carpet, sit on the carpet, take out a book. Even if they just page through, remember, they pick up words because they look at them and they um, look at the pictures. Then they can reread that. You can put out even similar topics. Other animals, farm animals, if you have the three little pigs, you can do the little red hen, something like that. Kids can write a journal. You can teach them how to do it. Remember, write necessary does not even mean they must write all the things out. They are still small, but they can even have a picture and they match a sentence strip that you are giving them. You can discuss the meaning of some words. Teacher and the children can make a graphic organizer together in trifold. They for those who are not able to read or draw yet. Then a teacher must read a lot to learners. Learners can interact if they are not reading. And remember, if they do not interact, they did not really comprehend. You can use color cards, sticky notes, and learners can point. To certain things for instance you can have a card up and um, if the story is exciting it, they can pinpoint to the pink little card if it's to complete the comprehension they can pinpoint to the green card have little smiley faces in your class that can show them also how they feel emotions ne? by giving learners a small focus and a reason to interact with the text they are more likely to remember what they read because of the continual check-in. Now what I can do, for instance, to, uh, to make this clear to you, we can read the comprehension. And now suddenly I can see some kids are really not comprehending or not understanding. Then I show them a smiley face, um, you know, sad face that they don't understand. Then they can, some of them can put up their fingers or pinpoint at that face. And then I know I have to repeat that again. Now, remember, um, by giving the learners then a small focus and a reason to interact with the text, they are more likely to remember what they read because of the continual check-in of their understanding which will lead to go 
without um, the sticky color notes. So sometimes you can just ask a question to see are the kids really comprehending or are they with you. Now, some learners are not proficient at converting the words that they read into a movie in their heads. Now remember, if I read the story to you, for instance, we take the three little pigs again, you know now from early childhood the nice pictures you had. Now if I repeat it in grade one, you will remember the pictures from grade zero. Now sometimes some kids can't um, make up that little movie in their head. Now we need to teach them how to do that and then otherwise they will just remember the words three little pigs that is just word calling. Now the left brain normally does that, the word calling. Now let's see now how we can make this movie making um, to the children as a skill. It can be developed using an e easy 15 minute exercise daily. The exercise does not, in does not involve to write down anything. Please, it, you use only your brain to do so. Now, let me just explain to you word calling. Word calling is the left brain auditory task. While creating a picture or movie of those words, the responsibility um, is then of the right brain hemisphere. When a learner regularly reads a passage well, but can't remember what he said, we know he is using an inefficient strategy for comprehension. In other words, they read, 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 but they can't say what they've just read. Sometimes we also tend to just read and we can't remember. Now, this is also a good strategy and skill for yourself. Now, you try to remember the exact words he read rather than converting the words into pictures. Now, examples how to do that. The teacher can read the passage aloud or the mother, uh, uh, the grown-up. Choose the material to read that is interesting and very descriptive. Standing in front of a, per a child, him or her, as you read to them, um, the child may sit upright and keep his eyes upwards. And while you are reading him, you must actually allow him to create that little movie. For instance, the three little pigs. Then you must see the three little pigs. Then you can pretend that you are looking at the projection screen in a movie. You can even make on the wall a square with tape that you or a nice poster and they must look there as if they are looking at a screen. Then they, you can read the sentence and they can then what you read they can make up a little movie in their minds. Then ask him or her a few questions until you are sure that the child is seeing the pictures of the word you have read in detail. As you do this training instruct the learner how to move his picture and freeze them when he wants to notice something. Now I'm explaining again three little pics. Let them carry on and when they freeze you bring them back again. For instance, look at the big brother. Remember he's the big brother? He's got the bigger tummy. Then you bring him back to that picture. Now he will remember that the bigger brother has got a tummy. Now freeze that picture for a while in his mind, not a real picture and then he continues again while you read the story. When you get to the end of the pa passage you're reading, instruct him to rewind the movie. Remember all the time back again, once upon a time there were three little pigs. He will go back to that in order to answer some questions about the passage. As you ask the questions, direct your child to gaze upwards as he or she reviews the movie for the answers. This is the exciting part. Remember when they retell you the story? They sometimes have a little fantasy and they put some extra detail. That's fine. That is how they really play their movie. The learner will be amazed at how easy it is to answer questions now. Students, please try this also with yourself. You will be amazed how you can remember and recall things. Now, step two. Remember step one? was the teacher that um, read loudly to the kids. Now the learner reads aloud to you as the teacher. After the learner has demonstrated the proficiency in converting the words to pictures, as he hears them, he is ready to read the word himself while creating his movie. 
Select a reading passage now that is easy for him to read. Remember, he can't read the exact same. Just make it easier. He can, the similar one, but make it easier and on his level. So that he can concentrate on making pictures and not sounding the words out now. Step 3. The learner reads now silently. When the learner is successfully um, reading aloud while making good pictures in his mind, you can now get him to read a passage silently, asking him to stop every few lines or so to tell you about this picture he has made. If the pictures are detailed and accurate, you can have him read to the end of the pass passage uninterrupted. Why do we say detailed and accurate? Remember, he fully now comprehended it. He understood the work, the passage that he had read. Now, since you have done it one more, remember, it can be a disturbance if you do it the whole time. So now, only do it one or twice, once or twice, and then it's enough. Then, at the end of the reading, have him then rewind his film and tell you at all that he has read now. Remember, his words to the pictures process will soon become automatic. It will not be the exact same words like he has read just now. But remember we said his words. Remember, no pictures in your mind, no answers. Few pictures, few answers. Great pictures, super great answers. Now remember, always test yourself as a student also with this because this is the way to study. The strategy is really simple, but very effective. Expect to see great changes in the comprehension and the retention of reading material in your learners. And there I can include even ourselves, you and me. Now, let's see how we can um, create a reading corner. Remember, we have now seen how we can have the retention of the child, but we must also make it interesting in our classes for them. Now, if I come to a class and it's dull, there's no reading material, do you really think a child will read? No, definitely not. A class library is suitable for learners from pre-primary to seniors and can contain books from multitude of reading levels and topics. Secondly, create a comfortable and inviting reading space. I mean, if I see a carpet there in a nice comfy chair or cushions, then I will gladly go and sit down and read, especially when the books are on a shelf, nicely packed out, and I will see nice colorful pictures. Some pictures will draw my attention and I will go there immediately to read. A teacher must inspire learners to love learning and reading. Now let's see how we can do that. An interesting reading corner will let the learners get engaged and relaxed at the same time. These learners will be inspired by the interesting corners and the wonderful books that are on display. You can use bean bags and the rug for the learners to get them out of their desks. Remember, it's easier for them to move and have a little bit of a relaxed way to sit in a comfy way, maybe on a cushion, and to let them read. Now, bean bags, those huge ones, you can have maybe four or five in your class. It depends on the space. Now, we make a list of our needs. How do you create a classroom? library that is both organized and enticing to your readers that really wants them to draw the atten attention. You build a collection of library books. You can purchase it at books um, sales or discount book sales outlets, any place. Maybe there's some parents who would like to donate books or um, sometimes people say, well, my kids are now grown up and they left the house. Here's some books that we don't use. Use them but take care of them. Remember, books is our friend's name. Encourage learners to bring in books, comics, magazines, other texts from home. All these things can create uh, your reading corner. Create a checkout system for the books. You can even just have a normal booklet or a list where they just where you have the names and where they can just write their names next to it or tick it off. Remember, it's important to have a, a system that you can see where your books are. Remember, we must take care of everything. These are important resources. This could be a simple notebook where learners can sign out also. 
it is important to have a, meth a method of tracking your books that are borrowed to ensure that they are returned upon completion. Otherwise, kids will just let them lie around, make them also a little bit responsible and say, listen, you have got this book, but you have to bring it back. Or if you read it in class, put it back where you have found it. Creating a reading corner can be a powerful way to personalize your classroom. By stepping outside the traditional box of the classroom, the spatial planning, you too can cultivate a meaningful area for your learning and your learners to use. Now, sometimes you as a teacher would like to read books. You have maybe a reading period or the new, um, I remember we have a readathon um, that's also now implemented in the schools. Then you can just go to your library there in class, get yourself a book and read to the kids. Hang posters or pictures on the wall. Avoid po posters that are too busy or bright as they will be distracting. For instance, you can make a nice poster. Um, please wash your hands before reading um, our friends. Ne? Call them your friends, the books. Play quiet, soothing music while learners are reading. Music will help learners focus and feel at ease when they read. Reach out to learners who you feel would particularly benefit from using this new space. Make an extra effort to have them, you know, um, let them feel comfortable there. Collaborate with learners to set clear guidelines also. Remember, be strict, then you know your reading corner will look wonderful. And we also teach our kids to be responsible and to take care of the books. Now, it is strongly recommended that you label the books um, as if it's in a library. You can have a colorful box, you can paint it nicely, you can maybe label your books and number them one, two, three, four. It does not necessarily meet, need to be like a true library system, but that you just know that you have a type of um, a, a method that you can check on your books regularly. You can decide on your system. Um, one of the most difficult things to work out is how to sort all, of the, um, all your books. Many people sort it by genres, topics, themes, accelerated readers, levels, guided reading levels. It depends on you. Now, let's decide on the categories. It is also a good idea to keep books in book bins. Like I've mentioned, even nice painted apple boxes can be used. Ne? They don't need to see the front cover, but just the back side. Why? Because learners tend to take only the books that has a nice color um, or a nice picture on the outside. They, um, then they want to read that, but we need them to get out all the books to read. Book bins can keep the books also organized and neat looking. Allow your learners to help decide the categories can be a great way to engage them in the library. They will be proud, remember, the minute you make someone part of it, they really take up some pride and then they will also take care of that library and they will also take up ownership. An example, each book that belongs in the basket or category has a matching colored sticker and a number. Then the basket can arrange um, according to numbers in correct orders. Now, let's see how we can demonstrate features of an effective reading program in the primary education. Again, it's, uh, I, I've said pre-primary, but it's also primary um, education. Effective school reading programs and schools share certain characteristics, from sound methods and materials to quality, professional development, and administrative practices. Now, what does that concern? It's, it's a, a mouthful, but let's look deeper into it. An effective reading and writing program will be balanced. Always think about that. By this is meant that it will include teaching of phonemes, phonics, sight words, vocabulary, pre-reading or reading strategies, comprehension strategies, writing, pre-writing activities, and among others on the level of the child. Now this is very important. Many factors contribute to the overall successes of be, um, a beginning um, this reading program. Now factors require a total school effort and cannot be accomplished without the support of the school management. The careful use of teaching time. 
please you can for instance we have a timetable you cannot teach the whole day just mathematics the kids need to have the different subjects so you need to stick to a timetable significant time must be planned for and dedicated to reading and language teaching language and concept development activities are an important part of the classroom curriculum now language instructions include your daily reading aloud and discussions of quality literature remember fiction and non-fiction effective educational practices for instance um, you must have in place that you know this is working for me and I'm going to teach this or do this um, you need to pre a plan and prepare beforehand you cannot decide there on that spot what to do teachers organize flexible and purposeful groups that are based on children's educational needs teachers provide instructions that involves both frequent interactions with children and constructive feedback now sound educational materials can be your research based criteria that are used to select the educational materials your reading opportunities and then learners must have access to classroom and school libraries remember what is the use of a library if they can't go in and read okay now let's look at the development of the following uh, wide reading as children become fluent they read increasingly challenging literature remember they are now familiar with the basic things so they want to enhance themselves also now they will go for fiction non-fiction greater complexities and more difficult books classroom discussions teachers and learners engage in meaningful discussions and you will see the kids that are really um, inspired by books and who picked up more knowledge they will even use that in your lessons and they will uh, be prepared to tell you oh but teacher this and this so be prepared for that also now as they read this various kinds of books and other materials learners learn and practice these comprehension strategies sometimes on their own or sometimes with direct help from the teachers now we get a variety of assessment tools also teachers or administrators who regard assessments as informative select and administer assessments according to the needs of this learners however the following assessments and evaluations should be used with all children now a screening assessment you can even start in the pre-primary and grade one every learner is screened for phonemic awareness alphabetical knowledge and understanding of basic language concepts remember screening also it's just the and you just show it to them also have it up in class they will ask you and for those ones that are really interested informal assessments on a regular basis children are informally assessed to determine if they are making an adequate process for instance I'll just give you a quick example you ask kids to read words basic words like say for instance we had the three little pigs the words one two and three now you can just tick off they do comprehend they can read that when they see the word three they don't say two okay now the end of the year assessments are the important ones every learner is then assessed at the end of the school year to see if they really comprehend and really um, did all the um, through the year if they did um, understand all the work now with this you inform your parents the teachers and the regional administrator of the learners progress now a positive school environment is where management and staff create this um, that are and it's welcoming to the learners as they are in a positive environment to learn and they want to learn more and gain more now professional development is where teachers take part in frequent relevant and continuous professional development that focuses on the implementation of a good classroom now I mean teachers you gain I mean all these booklets that you're reading from IOL are super you must just take that knowledge and put it into practice it must not stay just in the books please it must be in your mind and then you see what you can create already and if you are unsure go look on the internet and see um, gain more and, and get ideas but remember this is what we are part 
of talking about professional development, all the contact sessions, all the classes that you can get, take it like a sponge and really absorb all those things. Now, the sound administrative and management practices you will only gain later on when you are in a class. Administrators work to determine um, that all of the resources of the school, including staff time, are allocated to meet the goal of a successful reading instruction for every learner. This is not only the class teacher, the whole school, everybody takes actually hands and we form a circle to really build up to this child's reading. Now, let's quickly look at engaging on an effective beginning literacy instruction um, in an intense balancing skill instruction. Remember, you must be able to discuss this. Now, let's see in a holistic approach. Holistic means in total. An analysis of studies of children learning to read and of the task of reading show that the learner the, um, can read and it requires attention to both the purpose and the activity. I mean, if my, I can give kids hundreds of activities, but if, if it does not have a purpose, why do I want to give them the activity? Just to keep them busy? That's not an answer. That's not even acceptable. Making meaning. Meaning means that must guide them to help and assist them. And the conventions of our writing system, the complex spelling patterns of English, if I have the purpose to see the, the complex spelling patterns of English, yes, then I've got a purpose. Now, both must be attended to if children are to learn to read accurately, fluently and with understanding. Neither is sufficient on its own. Remember that. The more senses you use, the better. Balanced teaching of reading appears to be what enables young learners to make most substantial progress in the complex process of becoming literate. Now, from a base of evidence of successful classrooms, now remember Presley, Presley has got these ideas, now we can incorporate it here. Presley concludes that the most effective early literacy teachers engage children in a more sustained and significant way through, how? Let's see, teaching all the time in a variety of groupings can be groups of two, four, six, incorporating literacy teaching in instruction in other curriculum areas, balancing skills instructions with holistic experiences, covering as many as 20 skills an hour, some planned and others in response to children's needs. Now, employing a wide range of tactics to motivate, choosing stories and classroom activities of real interest to the children and encouraging them to see their successes as the products of their efforts. Remember their interest. I can't take the news, all the bad things uh, from the newspaper now and incorporate that in my lesson. I mean it's of no interest of the, in the grade 0, grade 1, 2 and 3 classes. Now remember their interest. Presley observes that it's not at all easy to transform an ineffective teacher into a, an effective one. Why? But he does urge all primary teachers to become the most engaging and most effective elementary teacher. So please, there's no excuse, I'm not good, I can't. You can. You must just go and see and make an effort. Remember, engage yourself. He presents six aims which all should adopt. Now let's see the aims that we can adopt. To create a strong balancing of skills instruction and a holistic literacy experience, you must know what you are teaching and talking about. To make strong connections between a reading, writing and connection and content learning. To teach a lot. To scaffold students, monitoring them as they read aloud and write providing mini lessons to move them along. You can even make your own and ask some, uh, an experienced teacher, please, can I have a micro lesson with you? Can you see, I want to do this even after hours at home. There are lots of people who are willing to assist you. Now, to do everything possible to motivate and to communicate high expectations while encouraging children to become self-regulated. To have a management plan 
although this may be less important in a busy, motivated classroom, but still you must have structure in your class. Then, to scaffold students, again, to monitor them as they read aloud, to do everything possible to motivate and to communicate high expectations. I want to emphasize these three points. Then, the last one, again, management plan, meaning that you have to have, for instance, all your things must be planned properly. And if you are unsure, ask an experienced teacher to assist you with that. Now, although this may be less important in a busy classroom, I can see that you need to know what you need to do. For instance, I've got now mathematics, then I need to do the following things. I need to manage this. After that, I need, if the bell goes, yes, you can still continue a little bit with your maybe mathematics, but continue and use that overall in the rest of the day. That is part of management. And at the end of the day, you know, this is what I should have achieved. Okay. Then, um, I would like to say good luck with your studies. And remember, study hard and do your best. Nobody can take your knowledge away, but everybody can gain from your knowledge. And then lastly, please remember, you can even SMS me, SMS me through the day, but I can only answer you after five. And remember, do not wait until number 99. As you can see, these are really um, long questions that you need to know how to answer them properly. And the minute you put it into practice, make it practical for yourself, then you know you've gained a lot.